So, I'm Rachel. I am the content marketing manager at The Hoth. And I remember the first time that Mark and I discussed even the possibility of throwing a conference like this. So, we were in our old office, not the one that y'all got to tour yesterday, the one that we filled so quickly that by the time we left, there were about 15 of us working off of beanbag chairs. And one thing I remember about this conversation was that I think Blogger was just like a few months old at this point. So instead of the 250 writers, the 50 topic creators, the 30 editors that we have, and our awesome in-house team, there was me, about 20 writers, a handful of clients, and we were just trying to figure out how to make this thing work, how we could create the best content product, and how we can get people to buy it. But Mark knew, even then, that Hoth Blogger was just going to be a monster of a product. And he knew even then that we wanted to figure out a way to give back to our community, to give back to our wonderful clients who we have the pleasure of working with every day, and to what I think has become the best freelance team on the goddamn planet. So I want to thank you all for coming here. And I want to thank you all for the opportunity to work with all of you every day. Um, this is going to be an incredible couple days. We are going to learn so much, and we are going to have such a blast. So can you all just give yourselves one more round of applause? Because we're all here. This is going to be awesome. So let's talk about what we all can do this year to take our blogs and turn them into just traffic generating money making machines. So in this room, how many people here have a blog? Personal blog, business blog, blog that you're running? Yeah. So I have good news for you. More than two thirds of internet users are reading blogs right now. And for content marketers, this is great, right? Because we don't have to convince people that blogs are important. We don't have to tell people that blogs are something they should be reading. They're already out there. They're already reading our blogs. There's just one issue. There are a shit ton of blogs out there right now. Right, so 440 million. And what I think is really interesting about this stat is that there has been explosive growth just over the past handful of years, right? The secret is out. People know that blogging works. People know that it's a great way to engage your audience, and it's a great way to generate re revenue. Excuse me. So I think this tends to lead to um, a misconception, which is basically that all you need to do is start a blog, put some content on it, and that people are going to come read it. And I am sorry to say, but that's just <laughs> not the case, right? <laughs> so you can't just write a blog and expect an audience to follow. And I think it's heartbreaking sometimes, because you know we all know that blogging works. We've all seen the statistics. We've all seen other, market other marketers generate just really great revenue, and you, know, you start to wonder, why not me? What, what am I doing wrong, right? What am I missing that other people are getting? And that's what I want to talk about today. So we're going to start with how to just create an insanely loyal fan base. We're going to talk about how to leverage SEO to just massively expand your audience. And we're going to talk about how you can get tons of value from each and every blog that you write. So let's start with audience. What can we do 
as content creators to find an audience that is just going to follow us. Okay, maybe not necessarily like this one, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? When we're going to create some super rabid fans. So I think the most important thing that we need to realize as marketers is just how much noise is out there. And when I talk about noise, this is, this is the stat I'm thinking of, right? So 5,000 ads a day. Let's take a moment and appreciate how insane that is. So um, George Papadeus is our operations manager, and he knows that every time I have to do some sort of mathematical calculation at work, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily end well. So I know that you all have your phones, and you probably have calculators on them. And I'm wondering, I'm thinking, and this is maybe generous, but let's say that we're all awake for 16 hours a day. Can somebody take their phone and let us know if we're awake for 16 hours and we're seeing 5,000 ads, how many ads on average an hour are we seeing? 312. 312. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> 312. We are being bombarded. And I don't need to tell you, right? You guys see them every day. We have pop-up ads. We have the like mind reader ads on the side of our Facebook feeds. We have uh, radio jingles, television commercials. We are being inundated all the time with advertisements. But we're people. That's fluffy. I'm so sorry, Hoth writers. We are obviously all people. So <laughs> we are all human beings. And because we're humans, we learn to adapt to our surroundings, right? And when it comes to advertisements, it's no different. We've learned how to tune out so much of that noise. So, like, who here has Adblocker, right? 200 million people have Adblocker right now. Um, does anybody still pick up the phone when they don't recognize the number calling? So, my mom, we've been texting for, what, like 15 years now? And she still signs all of her text messages to me, <laughs> love mom, like they're a postcard, <laughs> which is actually really cute and sweet. But even she knows not to pick up the phone when she doesn't recognize who's calling. Um, who here at Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, who's using their DVRs to fast forward? Yeah, so unless it's the Super Bowl, we are not watching commercials anymore. But we still, wanna, we still want information, right? We still want to know where to go, what products to buy, where to go to eat. So we're, we're doing other things. We are reading reviews, which I think is kind of funny because it means that we're like trusting gangs of internet strangers <laughs> to tell us what to do at this point instead of the actual people producing these products. We are going to Reddit. We are talking to our friends on Facebook, we're going to Facebook groups, we're going to our peers, or we're checking Google. And if you don't know these Google stats, they are incredible, right? So 40,000 searches a second, 3.5 billion in one day, and over a trillion a year. Those are some insane numbers. So what does this tell us? We don't want to be told what to do. We certainly don't want to be interrupted to be told what to do. We are looking for answers, but we want to find them ourselves. We want to do this on our own terms. And we're doing a lot of this on Google. But content marketing is different. Content marketing has the unique ability to just cut through all of that bullshit. Why? Well, instead of pushing the sale, content marketing is all about taking the audience and putting their needs first. It's about providing value, looking for the questions that your audience is asking, 
looking for the things that they need, the things that they are, are striving for. And we're providing the, the valuable information they want to get them where they need to be. And if you just think like I am, you know, I'm a content marketer, which, and I do love content marketing, I do have some real statistics that show how this is where things are going. So one, two out of three consumers trust content marketing over regular advertising. This next stat, if you're blogging, is awesome. The vast majority of internet users think that blogs are a good place to get information. That is really good news for us guys. And if you wanna write a blog that people are going to share if you want to expand your readership, well, almost 100% of the time, people are sharing blog content because they think their friends or family are going to find it useful. So you need to start by writing a useful blog. So, okay, what do we do? Now, we know that content marketing works. We know why it works. What are the steps we need to take to develop our content plan? Well, one, you got to know your audience. And if you, you know, are not sure, I know we all have blogs and it can be hard to sort of nail down that, that perfect customer avatar. I don't have time to get into that today, but I am here over the next few days. I'm going to throw up my email address. If you have any questions about how to figure out the audience you're, you're searching for, come find me. I would love to help develop your avatar with you. But once you have that idea of who your niche is, right, who you're going to be reaching out to with your blogs, you need to get to know them. You need to go out into the field and you need to find out what makes them tick. And then once you figure that out, you need to start writing for them. And I think sometimes as writers, this can be sort of difficult for us to wrap our, our, our heads around. Um, and I'm gonna be kind of harsh. Your audience doesn't care about you. Your audience could care less about you, about your brand, about your product or your service. They care about their own lives, right? We all have our goals, we all have our struggles, we all have our day-to-day -day that we're working on. And that's what your audience cares about. And so when you write your content, you need to remember to keep it about your audience's lives. Not yours, not your product. So, we know we need to get to know our audience. How do we do that? Well, these are some really easy places to go to figure out who your audience is from wherever you are. So, who here is on Reddit? Anyone Reddit users for marketing, otherwise Reddit for fun? Cool. So, there is a subreddit for everything. Right, I saw, Kenzie, I saw you nod. What is the weirdest subreddit you've ever seen? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Okay. So there is a subreddit about a random musician in Philly that people are following. If there is a subreddit about that, there is a subreddit for your niche. There are probably a few subreddits for your niche. And your audience is there, right? And the cool thing about Reddit, I think, too, when you're using it for audience research, is it's anonymous. So whether or not you want it, you're going to get the truth on Reddit because they don't care about what they're saying on there. You know, I was pretty shocked and pleased to see that there are 620 million Facebook groups indexed on Google right now. So those are super easy to find. You can go onto your Facebook page, search the kinds of groups there are, and just follow them. Follow the, great, the Facebook groups that are attached to your niche because that's where your audience is too, and that's where they're communicating and asking questions every day. Um, Quora is also awesome. Uh, so, and one reason it works so well for content marketing is it's question and answer based. Uh, so this is super useful for content marketers, right? Um, and if you're not familiar with Quora, you can start an account 
and it's 100 million users log on every day and ask questions, and then either experts or peers answer them. And you can sign up for Quora and, and follow these, these sites in your niche. And that's so great for us because so much of content marketing is about figuring out the questions your audience is asking and figuring out how, where to share and how the most valuable answers. So this is the first part, right? What we want to do as marketers is go to our market, right? Go to our audience, find trending topics and questions, the things on these sites that are getting tons of upvotes, tons of engagement. You want to research comprehensive answers, and then you're going to share them on your blog. And this next piece of content marketing, I think, is it's sort of like the, the secret ingredient that turns, I think, what good content marketing into great content marketing. So you're, you're doing your audience research, you're out there, you're on Reddit, Facebook, Quora, and what you want to do is figure out the lifestyle that audience desires. You want to figure out what their goals are, right? What are, what are they driving towards? Why are they on these sites? And you want to, with your content, show them that you understand where, you want, where they want to go. And this is great if you're selling a product, a service, because you'll be able to insert how your particular brand helps them on that journey, helps them on you know, whatever journey they are to get to the place they want to be. And when you do that, you can talk about your brand, you can talk about your product, but your content is still about them. One of the takeaways that I want you guys to leave with is that you know, the best content marketing is, is not going to be about the product. It's going to be about the audience. You've seen bad content marketing, right? It's like being on a date or being stuck in a conversation where they're, they're only talking about themselves and how great they are. And that's like the most annoying thing in the world, right? So don't make your content annoying like that. Really take the time to make your content about the audience that you're discovering. And once you show them that you, you understand that you're putting their needs before your own, just like in life, like that's how you build loyal customers, that's how you build loyal friendships and a loyal fan base. Um, and that's how you get more than that one-time sale or that one-time reader. That's how you develop those, those lifetime followers. So we are gonna move on. And we are going to talk about SEO and what we can do to leverage what Google is doing to just get those rankings that we know we all deserve and generate just an insane amount of traffic. So first thing to know about Google, it's getting smarter. And while it's not quite to like Terminator consciousness levels of understanding, it is um, really trying to figure out what human beings mean, what they actually mean when they put in a search query. Because it had to figure out how to deal with stuff like this. So <laughs> let's take a step back. Um, <laughs> Google. Because I think that as SEOs and content creators, the the easiest way to figure out what Google wants, right? And we're always like, what does Google want? What does Google want from my content? What, what can I do to give Google what it wants? Well, let's start thinking about what Google wants for itself. So Google is a business. That's another very fluffy sentence. I am so sorry, Hoth bloggers. Um, Google is a business, but it is more than a business, right? It is the dominant force in search right now. When it comes to tech search, Google is what is up. We are going to talk about the second largest search engine in a few minutes. And I can tell you now, it's not Yahoo. It's not Bing. When it comes to tech search, Google is it. So why is Google so successful? Well, it's really good at its job. And what is Google's job? So Google is but very simply, matching, the, matching search queries 
to their best possible answers. That's what Google does. So let's take an example. Let's say that I am looking for the best tennis shoes. And I plug best tennis shoes into my Google search bar, and the results page comes up with maybe tennis shoes that celebrities have worn, or what Venus and Serena wore at you know, an Open a few years ago, or tennis balls, or other shoes that aren't tennis shoes. So Google is not doing a good job, right, of matching my search to the best possible answer. And there's another piece of it. So let's say I, I put my best tennis shoes search into Google, and I think this is the most important thing that we as content creators have to keep in mind, by the way. Um, so I put in my Google search, I get a results page, and it looks good, right? All the headlines are like, best tennis shoes, how to find the best tennis shoes in 2018. But I click on that first answer, and it only talks about one tennis shoe. There's no comparisons. Or it doesn't tell me why those shoes are so perfect for tennis, or um, where I can buy them, or how much they cost. Well, this is also not the best possible answer to my question, right? And when I return to do another search, I may take my business elsewhere. At the end of the day, by giving valuable content higher rankings, Google is doing itself a favor as a business. So that leads us to the 2013 Hummingbird update. Um, and if y'all are not familiar, this really changed the game when it came to SEO and content creation. So Clayton mentioned this too in, in his opening. Before, when you wanted to rank your posts for SEO, um, it, was a, it was a much more simpler process. You would basically uh, find your keyword, strategically place it into different parts of the page, and you didn't really have to worry about the content. And that's because search back then was a little more superficial. Um, Google didn't really have an understanding of synonyms or context, so I'll do one more example. Let's say I was trying to find out how to write an awesome blog, right? And I put how to write an awesome blog into my search. And I know some of you remember this because I remember what this was like um, probably, oh God, 15 I don't, years ago, a while ago. So you put in your how to write an awesome blog and the results page, regardless as to whether or not they were the best answers to my question, which, you know, how to write an awesome blog. What I really want to know is how to write a really good blog, right? How to write a great blog. Awesome is just a word I'm using to, to talk about how good I want my blog to be. Well, that results page, regardless of whether or not they were the best answers to my questions, would probably all have awesome in the headline, right? And so Hummingbird and Semantic Search has allowed Google to recognize those synonyms. So now, if I type in how to write an awesome blog into my search term, my results page is probably going to be, number one, the complete guide to blog writing, number two, the ultimate guide to starting a blog, right? 25 things you need to know to write the best blog. They are all going to be super comprehensive questions, or answers, excuse me, to my question. Which is why now, when it comes to getting your content to rank highly on Google, topics have become more important than keywords. So, and I don't want to sort of take away from keywords and their importance. They are, they are still important. And I think that when you know, you're doing your topic research, it's totally fine to do a keyword search and figure out you know, what, what keywords are getting a lot of traction and what makes sense for your industry. But you can use those. You can use those to come up with your topics. But because we are not doing those exact match keywords anymore, what you really want to do is focus on providing a comprehensive question, or excuse me, answer to your users' questions. And so let's, let's talk about those topics, right? So we've discussed, <laughs> we've discussed uh, going to Reddit, 
um, Quora, you know, Facebook groups. You want to find out the questions that your audience is asking. That's really what this is all about um, when, you're, when you're trying to provide valuable content to them. So we also use a really great tool. You got, I know Lauren knows. I see some topic creators. We use Ahrefs um, at the Hoth. We use Content Explorer. It's awesome. You can plug in like any keyword or industry and it will show you what's trending right now like on social. So what's getting a lot of traction on Facebook, Pinterest, um, Instagram, this is just a really awesome tool. And I want to drive home one of the things that you want to do as content creators is to write on what's relevant right now, right? What are people talking about right now? We don't want to focus on what was hot like back in, you know, 2014, 2015. Okay, so now we know, we know some resources where we're going to find our topics. We know that we want to start with the topic instead of the keyword. So here are a few things you can do with those topics to uh, make sure you get the most out of them. So number one, topical depth. And basically, bigger is better. So long form content we're seeing get a lot of traction right now. And I think that's because Google is trying to match its users, right, to the best possible answer. And a longer answer is naturally just going to be more comprehensive, unless it's filled with a bunch of fluff, but we don't do that here. So long form content, more comprehensive, more valuable. I'm doing my awesome blog search. And again, that first page, you guys know, it's always going to be the complete guide, the ultimate guide, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So next, we have topical breadth. And this basically means that the more posts you write, the better for your SEO. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, one, you're going to have more index pages for your site. Two, you're going to naturally rank for more keywords, right? You're going to have more link opportunities. So we have um, more opportunities to internal link. We all know about internal linking back from one, page, one of our website pages to another. You're going to be able to have more content to do that with. You're going to give other sites more opportunity to link back to your page because you're covering more subject matter. We know that bounce rates matter when it comes to SEO, so you know, it's better for your, your rankings the longer people stay on your site. Well, if you have more content for them to read, you're giving them more opportunity to stick around, right? And we kind of touched on this, but recent, con recent content is going to be more relevant. If Google is trying to send me to the best possible answer to my question, the best possible answer is probably not from 2013. So if you don't believe me, here's a HubSpot study. And I think what's really interesting is that there is like virtually no difference between not having a blog and only posting once a week when we looked at this traffic, right? You need to be posting multiple times a week. And you guys can see those numbers, right? That's when this really starts to take off. And that's when we see a really significant increase in your, your inbound traffic. And we do it too. So the Hoth does practice what it preaches. Um, and you can see how our traffic just increased when we started our content marketing program. And if you guys don't read the Hoth blog or follow our social media, by the way, you should because it's really good. <laughs> so. I've basically repeated the same sentence over and over again, and that's just because I really want to drive it home. If there's one thing um, I want you all to take from this when it comes to your SEO, it's that Google is trying to match questions to their best possible answers. And if you want to see your rankings improve, that's your job as a content creator and SEO. It's your job to do that now. So I have been spending a lot of time talking about <laughs> all the things that you have to do, a lot of work, right? So research, post more, write longer posts. But the really cool thing about having like beautiful blogs that are super valuable and that people really want to read is that you can use those blogs to kill a bunch of birds with a stone, your blog being that stone. So social media. I'm assuming that once you, you write a blog that you're posting it to your Facebook, your Twitter, your socials, right? Well, you can do that more than once. So social media posts that go on there, I've read kind of have a life of about eight hours because that's how quickly, right, we're all kind of scrolling through. So you can 
totally post that blog content more than once. You can post it, if it's super valuable, you can post it over the course of a few years, right? Those blogs, especially once you've built up a library, can totally become a huge part of your social media calendar. So if you're not sure what to, to post on your Facebook or your Twitter that day, take that really valuable, relevant blog, and you can change the headline, right? You can make it more in tune with whatever is happening right now. Throw it up on your socials. This is just such an easy way to build out a social media calendar with work that you've already done. You already have that awesome blog post. So email. And um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time working in email marketing, actually. So I have a very soft spot in my heart for email. Um, still has a fabulous ROI. You still get 38 bucks on every dollar you spend. But because I, I also have worked a lot in it, I have seen some ridiculously terrible sales emails. Um, and I think that happens a lot. Like we sign up for our, our MailChimp account or whatever, and you know, we're like, okay, what are we gonna do with our email? And it turns into trying to sell, talking about a sale, a newsletter that has ridiculous fonts and like 27 exclamation points, which get you routed into spam, by the way. Um, <laughs> but promoting your blogs suddenly can become your email marketing. And this is perfect because good email marketing should be like good content marketing. It should be providing value rather than a sale. And now you have this super valuable piece of content. And I would write that email like you're writing it to a friend. Hey, I, uh, I just put a ton of work into this blog I'm really proud of. It's called X. You know, I thought that you would find it useful. And I'd love you to take a look and, and hear about what you think. It takes little to no time to send out to your list. And it can bring really big returns. So we talked about how Bing and Yahoo are not the world's second largest search engine. I know it's like literally on that slide, but what is the world's second largest search engine? It's YouTube, YouTube right now. So 100 million people are watching videos every day. And again, you have the content right now. You have the content. So all you need to do, set up your your webcam, grab a friend. You can, doesn't have to be crazy dynamic. Do a video, two to three minutes, just talking about the most important parts of your blog. You put that on YouTube, include a link back to your post, and suddenly you're engaging with people who you probably wouldn't have gotten to engage with otherwise, and you're sending traffic back to your site. So one more, I love this hack. Um, so it's just super, super simple. And I actually um, first read about it, I was reading Neil Patel's site, and he was talking about how one of the ways that he had really gotten his blogs to just you know, launch the way that they've launched. So Hoff bloggers know, we, what do we do? What are, we do external links, right? External links in every post, you are required to do a certain amount. And what we do is we link out to other authority sites in every blog post we write. We use those for resources, for data, well, I hope you're gonna do this with your own blogs. Um, and what you can do is inform those site owners. And you could email them, you can find like their contact us page or their email address. I think it's even better to tag them on your social media. So when you throw that blog post up on your Twitter or your Facebook, you wanna at them, you wanna tweet them, you wanna tag them, because they have followers and they're watching their socials. And those people could totally retweet and share your post. And suddenly you have just massively expanded your audience with like minutes of work. Yes. <laughs> so once you have that really valuable piece of content, and you do, you put a lot of work into this content because that's what Google's asking of us right now. But once you have it, there is just so much you could do with it. So I want to thank you guys for <laughs> coming and listening to me talk today. Um, you know, we're just getting started. Uh, this is going to be an incredible few days. We have some awesome speakers. I can't wait to get to know all of you more. Um, I don't, do we have time for Q&A? Yes. We have time for Q&A. Um, so I will take some questions, and if for whatever reason you 
you know, think of a question later or whatever, um, that's my email address. I would love to talk about content with any of you, so feel free to reach out to me. And question time. Does anybody have one? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't think, and Clayton can probably help me out here. Um, I think you want to, Clayton. You know, what, I'm going to turn it to you, SEO guru. Put me on the spot. I know. So yeah, you can cross you know post to Medium. The, the idea is you first post it on your blog, and wait for that to get indexed. Then you can co cross post it on Medium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think because you, you own your blog, right? And that's where you really want people to go. So I post it to that first, but you can also, after it gets indexed, you can cross post it to Medium and also get that traffic there. Cool. For the record, I was going to say that to you, Clayton. Thank you. You, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have questions? I'll run the mic to you. Here. Do this one. Oh, uh, yay. What's up? Hi. Uh, Hi. So uh, when you're talking about uh, creating your personal blog and mm -hmm. thinking about the needs of your, your target audience more than your own, mm -hmm. um, if, if the ultimate goal of uh, what you're trying to sell someone is, is yourself, right? Like yeah. you're, you are the product, how do you uh, sort of balance those two, those two pieces? I love that, this is such a good question. So my sister is, um, she's in fashion and she's trying to launch her own fashion blog right now where she is really the brand, right? But what she is doing with her content is really saying, okay, my audience are people who really want to like do, I mean, not that she's not an egotist, but like kind of do what I'm doing now, right? Like take fashion into their own hands, find really great sales, and find a lot of freedom in you know, the ability to dress for whoever you are, like no matter what. And even though she is the brand, what she's doing is giving valuable advice. Like this is how I figure out it's a good fabric. This is um, where I go to thrift. If I'm looking for this particular style that day, like these are the, um, the brands that I look for, or this is when I go to eBay, and this is when I go to Salvation Army. So you can still make yourself that, that personal brand, but if you're doing that, I think you also want to engage with people who are trying to live the lifestyle that you're living, right? So you can still do that and, and make your content about them. Does that make sense? Hello. Hi. Now, this might be a silly question, uh -huh. um, but as a reseller, I don't really know much about the blogger. What is it, and uh, how would I sell that to uh, a client, or <coughs> what would be a sales pitch on that? Well, who, so who are your clients right now? Uh, I've got uh, uh, vacation rentals, mm -hmm. uh, landscapers, uh, and various different local type businesses. Yeah. I mean, so we have some experience with that, right? So what you want to do is really write to people who want somebody to take some stuff off their hands, right? So your content's going to be about, um, you know, the work that they are doing day to day to the day. And, you know, what better than to have somebody who can take some of that off of their shoulders, right? Does that make sense? Well, we understand that we need the content, and, and none of us are really writing. Yeah. I, mean, I used to write years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got websites that we're, you know, doing the SEO on. Yeah. And, and so if we use the blogger, are you blogging on your blogs, or would you be blogging on our sites? I miss, I'm sorry, I missed the end of that. Uh, if we use the blogger um, yeah. tools that you have, are yeah. you blogging on your blogs, or, or would you be blogging on our our websites? Whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll take a little bit of that one. The sales pitch to your clients is basically this. I'll go up to the front so you all can see. Oh it. yeah. But the sales pitch is basically this: is that in the past mo most SEO agencies focused on on page and links, but what we've seen, like we have hundreds and hundreds of customers on our managed SEO product, and we see that. If you want to get more traffic to your website, your targeted traffic, 
you have to do both links and content. The people that are not doing content, not doing blog content, are not seeing the same results. So the more content you have on your website, it creates authority in Google's eyes. Get that topical depth, get that topical breadth, and then your, tra your client's traffic starts exploding. So that's, that's the pitch. Thank you, Clay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, who else we got? Anybody, other questions? We good? All right, give a round of Thanks, applause for Rachel. Thank you so much.